Yes, good morning and welcome. You're indeed watching Citizen TV. This is Power Breakfast, and that's a hashtag to use in the next few hours. Hashtag Power Breakfast. Uh, this is the news review, and uh, we want to look at the headlines. Uh, this morning, a very privileged to have on my left, Stephanie Muya. Next to Stephanie, we do have Mark Bichachi, a regular face here. I think, Stephanie, it's your first time here. It's a privilege. Oh, yes. It's a pleasure <laughs> to have you. Karibu <laughs> sana. <laughs> and on my right, another very familiar face, uh, Dan Stenomari. Karibu ni sana. Right. My panelists for this uh, discussion this morning. Uh, the, of course, the big uh, headlines have to do with that big... Uh, uh, petition before the Supreme Court uh, well it's yet to be filed so we still can't call it a petition <laughs> we're still waiting for it to be filed so that it can actually exist uh, NASA have until midnight today uh, to file that petition and that's the headline on the standard tough talks that led to NASA court option remember NASA drew that was going to court uh, previously but now we're seeing them going to court why is that uh, that's uh, what uh, the standard seeks to cover in their story uh, the nation is more direct midnight deadline for Ryan's petition. NASA leaves it to the last day to file its case, challenging President Huru's victory in last week's election. Lawyer says Alliance rushing to build a watertight case. Also featured on uh, both the dailies on the front pages is uh, yesterday's week with Mass uh, for the late Christmas Sunday that uh, the slain ICT, IEBC ICT manager uh, who will be buried tomorrow in Sierra. Uh, of course, uh, the widow saying, "May my husband's killers never know peace." That's uh, on the bottom. Uh, that's the bottom of the daily front page of the Daily Nation. On the top strip of the Standard, the Sandro killing calls for justice at moving mass. Yes, very interesting on the back page of the Daily Nation. Broke MPs seek cash bailout. Rush for money points to hash reality of heavy campaign spending that has taken its toll on members. Now, outgoing members, these are uh, members who lost the election, uh, seek their savings from the circle. While some of those who retained seats are pursuing fresh loans. That's a very interesting read <laughs> on the back page of the Daily Nation. And uh, probably uh, we could start with this one. Um, life does change. The end will be changing in reality. <laughs> life does really change, especially when you lose an election. Uh, it's true. And then considering the fact that probably some of them either had to take loans or they had people <coughs> that were supporting them in their campaigns, and that's money that they have to pay back or we don't even know what they promised to give them as soon as they get in. I think that um, campaign strategy, maybe we need to, we are hoping that Kenya will be progressive enough that will see more of the Bonfest Mwangi type of campaign strategy because at least that is it involves the people and it shows that the people are the ones that are supporting you and it's the people that are putting you there. Unfortunately it's the other way around for Kenya. Our politicians come, they have the money, Kenyans don't necessarily mm -hmm. contribute to their campaigns and that's why you find that sometimes our needs are not addressed at the end of it all because we're also not involved from the point of where maybe they were writing their manifestos mm -hmm. and just showing us what they want to do for so us. So you're not willing to contribute yeah, to your campaigns yeah. as well. But uh, uh, the, the prospect of you uh, getting into elective politics is very attractive. And uh, you, you, you saw the number of aspirants yes. spending millions just to get elected. Mm -hmm. But people really think about the other end after this job. Mm -hmm. What next? How will my situation be at that time? You know, it's like taking your entire football career on one match. Eh? It's not a very clever strategy because you need to be able to play a few more games mm -hmm. in order to balance out because the chance of playing any game is 50-50 at best. And you know in this particular election we had over 14,000 candidates for less than 2,000 elective positions. So there are 12,000 people nursing their wounds. And that plays into the narrative that why is Kenyan politics so attractive for everybody? Mm -hmm. Because the nature of politics is supposed supposed to be you are giving yourself to serve. It should be a position literally where you are pinching yourself to be sort of like a Jesus for your community. Mm -hmm. But what has happened is now you are like an emperor to your community. So everyone wants that position. And the problem again also is because we have a lot of briefcase political parties. Even the big ones, if you remove the top two or three people, there is no political party mm -hmm. after that. So the top two or three people finance the whole thing. And when that happens, you know, the, he who pays the piper calls the yes. tune. Yes. 
-hmm. And that's the problem. That is why our politicians, the moment they get into the August House, they become insensitive to the people, not because the people voted for them, but in their minds, I bought you. Mm -hmm. I spent 50 million shillings. I mm -hmm. spent 100 million shillings. I own you. And therefore, I am here to serve at my interest. Yes. Those are the dynamics that play out. And then the expense of it. For, to run for MP in this country, people are looking for 100, 120 million. That is a lot of money in any language. Even in Zimbabwean dollars, it's a lot of money. <laughs> you know? So it is that narrative that then also makes someone becoming an MP become a business decision versus a leadership mm -hmm. decision. So you position yourself to recoup your money. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And uh, that's then, of course, to most of those people going into politics, they look at it as an investment uh, as opposed, uh, and as uh, uh, Mark rightly put it, as opposed to service to the public. You look at it as an investment. You go take loans. Uh, you go because this, some of these people are entitled to gratuity, yeah. but that gratuity will not be enough even to offset the loans that they've incurred mm. just to try and seek maybe a second term. Hence, most of them are broke now. What happens is that uh, there is a definition. All English words are defined by the Oxford Dictionary, mm. but there is a political definition specifically for the Kenyan politics. Politics in Kenya is a serious, serious investment in terms of it is the only way, it is the only paying profession of late. My good student here, I see her as a lawyer. You've not appreciated that she's uh, one of oh, the Oh, she's a student. Mm -hmm. So we do have uh, a student and her teacher on my panel. This really morning. It really happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can only find it. Well. <laughs> you can only find it. Well. <laughs> she's one of the best brains uh, in mm -hmm. the legal profession. But she knows very well, and everybody knows very well, that it is not an avenue now for richness. Law, medicine, architect journalism used to be the uh, mm -hmm. a, a profession that every child could look for mm -hmm. nowadays every parent wants their children to be politicians the reason mm -hmm. is that it is the only empty check for corruption mm -hmm. once you land in politics you carry all the money that comes on your way and all the tenders are given to politicians all the power in terms of employing people is no longer based on qualification is based on politics, is based on the political network, and that is the reason as to why it is life and death. I'll tell you, in my ward where I was, there were more than 27 candidates on the ballot mm -hmm. for the MCA position. Why we have uh, this thing? I was giving an, another joke to yesterday to Mohammed that in the next presidential ballot, mm -hmm. we are likely to have a hundred people mm -hmm. in the ballot for the president. The reason is why this crave? The reason is that all the institutions that are supposed to check ex expenditure of public resources have collapsed. Mm -hmm. Courtesy of the politicians who have drafted laws that make it impossible for those organs mm -hmm. to work. Number two, it is the most paying profession as I've said. You're looking at a presidential campaign. Our salary that we pay our president is around 1.2 million. Mm -hmm calculated for 60 months, that's 5 years, mm -hmm. is around 60 million. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised that in 5 years that is what President Uhuru Kenyatta is going to earn or that is what Raila Odinga was anticipating to mm -hmm. earn. But that 60 million might be money spent for one rally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in a day, these guys do around 10 to 20 rallies. Mm -hmm. So how much do they spend? When the law came into, f when there was a bill that was trying to cap the amount to be spent on political campaigns, Parliament rejected it. That has never worked. So, my, my take is that unless we make uh, uh, politics less attractive in terms of the gains people get outside what that is stipulated, mm -hmm. that is the problem. Number two, how does it translate to this fiasco we are seeing? Kenyans have now known that once you elect somebody, you are not electing that person to go and do the specific job as provided by the law. There is a new job description. Anybody elected is not supposed to make the laws and provide oversight as provided by the constitution. A new job description now is they must pay all the maternity bills yes. for all the women within their constituency. They must uh, foot all the funeral expenses. They must pay school fees 
mm. not from the CDF account, but from their own mm -hmm. accounts. They must do everything, literally. The villagers who come to Nairobi must be transported back, mm. their, fi their affairs are refunded. So the new job description for elective positions is what is making this. And that is why the budget for campaigns is so high. When you saw those campaigns, all over that we have been uh, analyzing you see crowds and crowds of people appearing there they, they must crowds. be paid yes. Yes. they are rented yeah. so the, the kenyans have learned very fast that pay me because you are going for five mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. i'll never see you mm -hmm. surprisingly from tomorrow or from ninth the kenyans who are bribed to vote they have already started complaining yeah. And every other time, <laughs> you hear them say, we don't have a road, we don't have this. Mm -hmm. yes. But you ask them, those are the people you voted for. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why the likes of Miguna, my good friend, nobody will vote for them. Because the, the Ukuro courts are people with brains. The Migunas are people with brains. Kenyans don't eat brains. Kenyans eat money, yeah. and that is yeah. what we see now. Not to suggest that the others who got elected do not have brains, but <laughs> <laughs> you must combine both. Yeah. 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 Brains and money. Let's be fair to uh, the, the, the politicians and our legislators as well. Mm -hmm. It is a very expensive lifestyle for Kenyan politician because. Uh, the house you live in, the kind of car you drive, uh, the kind of uh, uh, hotels, restaurants you, uh, and establishments you visit, uh, the kind of bank you use, uh, how your spouse uh, addresses, how they... It is expensive and that's why probably at the end of it all you have nothing left for yourself. But who sets the standards? <laughs> who says that for me to be a politician I have to have that big vehicle and all that? I think that even us as Kenyans, we are entertaining this form of culture. Because these people are employed. In fact, we are the employers. So, we should not be letting them live this kind of lavish lifestyle, lifestyle from our taxes. But unfortunately, we are so lax. We do not, it's like this, this mentality that we have, and that's what I'm saying, we do not understand that we are the ones that are employing them. Because if we did understand that, from the process of campaigning, the moment these people step and say that they mm -hmm. want to buy, this is where we start engaging them on factual matters, not on issues of will I get a tender, will I do what, once you get in, and that's the problem. Yes. Because we are also enabling them. The issue is, uh, yes, there are a few lucky ones who end up getting, and by lucky I mean uh, whether it's uh, legal or not, yeah. uh, by getting those tenders and getting mm -hmm. good money, and by the end of it all, they are home and dry, mm -hmm. uh, and they are living a good life whether or not they get re-elected. Mm -hmm. But there are those who just went into parliament, did not get any extra money, <laughs> but still the pressure to live that kind of politician's mm. lifestyle. Because Mark, I know if you get into the national assembly, <laughs> you will change even more. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you will no longer be, be uh, seen uh, having a, a drink or a meal <laughs> to get anywhere. You know Fred, let me tell you, the, the, the most interesting thing is it's an African culture to have two gods, the one in heaven and the one in parliament or state house. That is our culture. Mm -hmm. You understand? It is, it is in Africa where a president has 40, 50 vehicles in his entourage. So it is understood, even in churches today, a preacher has two PAs, one to wipe his sweat and the other one to open the Bible. This is the problem. In Africa, we have a habit of worshipping leaders. And and therefore a leader needs to make himself mystical mm -hmm. you know so what happens is even when people are running for office yesterday you were with him eating at java or even at a kibanda but the next day the moment he declares to vie he hires bodyguards and he mm -hmm. went, uh, puts black shades on them mm -hmm. so that you get this sense mm -hmm. of yeah. them being vulnerable and it gets even worse you've seen on their facebook accounts even mm -hmm. before one vote is cast they've written honorable. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the, the pursuit for the title mm -hmm. is an African obsession. Mm -hmm. It is not just in Kenya. As Africans we believe that even I, <laughs> let me make a joke. <laughs> there's, there's, there's once there was a family meeting and uh, one person was introduced as, uh, let me use your name as uh, Stephanie. And she says, uh, 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 Dr. Stephanie, mm -hmm. to your family. 
So we have this idea that we must endear ourselves to title, create um, pomp and paraphernalia and all sorts of... But that drama. does come at a cost. It comes at a cost. Yeah, yeah. But you see, it is, it, is, uh, it is not really the politician who's at fault here. It is we as Kenyans mm -hmm. who believe... How many times have you heard people say that that is too low for the president to do? Mm -hmm. You understand that the president to call Dunstan is too low for him. You understand? The president was in Kenyatta market, for example, exactly. yesterday. Yeah. And that's why we're in love with this president, because Uhuru Kenyatta has broken a lot of those laws. But that's what we need to do. We need to stop feeling like anyone who leads us is God's deputy. You know, it's like the Trinity and then Dunstan. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> it, it does look like a lot of money, and uh, it's mm -hmm. been tabulated on the park, uh, back page of the Daily Nation. Um, uh, the new salary for employees has been reduced to 621,000. The old salary was 710. Mm -hmm. They used to get a grant of 5 million shillings just for the car. A grant, not a loan. Mm -hmm. That has been scrapped off. They no longer get it. Mileage uh, for vehicles, uh, mileage uh, transport, they used to get up to 2 million shillings. Now they're getting about 730,000. Allowances have been scrapped. Responsibility allowance has been scrapped. It is going to be even harder for the new politicians. Because if these ones had all this money, including grants, this time around they're going to be given a loan. Mm. Yes? So uh, members of the National Assembly or the Senate who are going to lose in the next elections, more of them will be rushing back to the circle to throw their shares. Let me tell you, Fred, that is only on paper. Mm -hmm. The politicians, we've seen very serious battles between NASA and uh, Jubilee. They can never agree, mm -hmm. but they only agree on one element. Money. Their salaries. Mm -hmm. You will see them. I saw a very good uh, the, 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 the S, uh, Sarah, Sarah's uh, led commission. Yes, because I, I love that. That's why we're getting the new. Uh, <laughs> that office will be scrapped. Once these guys land in parliament and they are sworn in, the first issue they'll be tackling is that the inflation cost has mm -hmm. made what they used to get mm -hmm. peanuts. So they need more money. So, all these things I'm saying is that uh, the political class, as my good uh, Wakili has put it, Stephanie, the problem has never been with the politician. The problem is about the society. Mm -hmm. What is it that we produce, mm -hmm. parliamentarians, the legislature, the politicians, are a product mm -hmm. of the environment. Mm -hmm. We want to set a standard without looking at what the community produces. The question about corruption, as Mark puts it, is to an African, there's nothing called corruption. Mm -hmm. It is an appreciation. Mm -hmm. While to the Muzungu, it is not acceptable within the common law, the common law principles of what you are entitled. To an African, when Fred, I come here, I'm already taking a cup of tea. If my good lawyer goes to court, I, she'll be arguing that I made some comments because I, there was some undue influence. Yes, because I was given yes, a cup of tea. Yes. There was some inducement. Mm -hmm. But to an African, this is cutties. Yes. And, and that is the whole problem that we have. That how do we move out and remove this African concept mm -hmm. of looking as a leader? And that leader is plus two, three wives. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of guys who are elected for the first time are going to add wives. <laughs> Others are going to add uh, husbands. <laughs> when we are long to see people who are living in a modest lifestyle, mm -hmm. why should they change to a particular lifestyle? Because that is the expectation of the society. Yeah. And this time around, it's going to, if at all, the new recommendation for uh, remuneration of uh, legislators sticks, according to what SRC has said, it's going to be much tougher for these people. Are we doing it right now that you're saying it's a cultural issue? Then why are we pressing uh, this leader that we just elected? Uh, for, why are we taking away all these things that we had given them before? A five million shilling car grant is no longer there. That means any new member of parliament has to dig deeper into their own pocket to buy a car. Let me tell you something. Being a, it's not it's not an enriching position. And as I was saying, they are there working for isn't us. That, isn't that just facilitation, uh, probably to facilitate uh, this uh, legislator to, uh, to perform his duty? I do not think so, because that is that that is probably a personal car, and there are official cars that they can use for anything that they want to do. That is just just 
that is what you're saying, enabling that form of entitlement. And this attitude, unfortunately, it's going to ruin it for us, even for those Kenyans that have gotten these seats out of their own merit. Mm -hmm. For example, the, the people that, uh, the young man that campaigned the whole time on a bicycle, yes. that was telling people, Lukiana Seta, Weka tick. And he got him because I'm sure people believed in him. But can you imagine if we have this enabling culture up there? When he gets there, you're getting the money. It will be yeah, to so you see, how, see how, how, made, how he will change. He the says, next I, also feel like we need, I, I, I wish that there was some form, there was a way Kenyans, and the constitution allows for it. It's just that I feel like we've also not understood the constitution enough yet to be able to act on these laws and also we have not understood the kind of effect this kind of money these people are getting and we linking it to the issues that we are facing there is no unga why is it not happening yet at the top there are people who can afford to get bills and bills of unga and they are kenyans like us even if they are politicians even if they are considered to be on, in this sort of class and that's the issue we are not linking this kind of problems that we have as to what they're supposed to be doing and understanding what they are getting and also wanting to get this information because as i was saying most Kenyans probably don't even know how much these people get but they, you might find that people don't even know that there's supposed to be a cut for them and we are also we are not even aggressive enough in understanding what our leaders are doing mm -hmm. and that is where that there's a there's a disconnection and that is how these things keep on happening we come to realize that the economy has been affected so much yet these are things that could be dealt with and we probably just give more money to yes. the people's needs. Now, MPs, including those who have been re-elected, are entitled to gratuity uh, or end-of-term pay. Mm. This guarantees each of the 418 members of parliament, including women representatives and senators, about 6.7 million shillings each, just for getting to the mm. end of the term. Yet, this is not going to be enough. 6.7 million could sound like a lot of money, but yeah. if you've gone through the campaigns, yeah. Mark, this is nothing. You know, I... I, I I, I sometimes marvel at the irony of what we say first. Let's understand that mathematically speaking, if you earn 150,000 shillings a month, you are in the top 5% of this country. Mm -hmm. Top 5, okay? 150,000. An MP is doing 700,000. That is a reduced, um, 610,000 reduced. It makes him in the top 1%, 1% mm -hmm. of this country. You understand? If you and I were to earn 700,000 shillings a month, we would buy a new car every month <laughs> and still have a lot of change left over mm -hmm. because we make do with basically peanuts. The truth of the matter is there are cars for 400,000 shillings. Now, the reality of the matter is this. Amoshibo um, cannot be caught uh, dead uh, <laughs> riding in such a car for 400,000 What exactly will happen to him? Will he shrink into mm -hmm. nothingness? You know, this is the problem. We need to stop idolizing position. And this is the problem that we have even inherited it to our young people. Our young people want lifestyle without work. They want the lifestyle without production. That mm. is why sponsors are the biggest thing. It's the <laughs> same mentality with the parliamentarians. It's the same thing. It's just that parliamentarians are in bed with corruption. But our youngsters are now looking for the same parliamentarians so that they can live in Kileleshwa. Mm -hmm. That is the question. So the question that's an extra burden for the legacy. Later, being a being, being a sponsor, and you still have to do all this thing. Let me tell you, you, know, you know, uh, like, as 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 a consultant, so I'll not mention names, but I remember there was one parliamentarian who was paying rent for nearly five different women, so his entire salary would be spent on paying rent for these women to maintain, because you know, the, it can't be in Korogosho, so the flat is, <laughs> is somewhere in Kileleshwa, mm -hmm. three or four of them, and the reality of the matter is for as long as we want lifestyle, without any form of morality, without any form of decency then it cascades into every cut of society, mm -hmm. nowadays in Kenya, no one wants to work mm -hmm. no one wants to work, yes, every boy life. is looking for a sugar mommy, every girl is looking for a sponsor and that is what is happening, so it is not just a parliamentary thing mm -hmm. is Kenya as a people we are obsessed with wealth no matter the, 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 the how you get it and that is why in church you will hear preachers say if you come here with corrupt money we will pray for it and we will sanctify it mm -hmm. that's where we are as a society that it's all about the money oh it's very interesting the headline on the back page of the daily nation reads broke MPs seek cash bailout from circles outgoing members seek their savings while some of those who retained seats pursue fresh 
loans. This is just the pain of loss mm. and what it means to lose in an election. Quite a number of people lost. 111, 179 men mm -hmm. lost. Yeah. Yeah actually lost no, in these actually, elections. Remember there are 12,000 people mm -hmm. in total yes. who lost. So those are income 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 the income the, 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 the pain of loss. The uh, this is just one of the headlines. Let's now take a break. Power breakfast returns. Uh, we will be discussing the bigger headline today and that's about NASA's petition and uh, uh, what went behind the scenes. What went on behind the scenes. Uh, remember NASA had said uh, they're not going to quote what happened for them to actually change their mind. And that, when Pub Breakfast returns.